Deputy uh, and thanks, uh, thanks uh, Deputy, Deputy um, Connolly and thanks Ken. Uh, that's Ken. Uh, well, obviously Brexit uh, is the overarching issue, even when you look through these conclusions, Minister. Uh, but I think it has to be remembered again uh, the responsibility the European Union has for the incredible mess uh, that uh, we're in right now. I mean, it was the European Union that insisted on uh, separate negotiations for the withdrawal, the, the divorce treaty, if you like, and separate negotiations for the future relationship. Yet, you know, when you think about it, any divorce, it's, it, the basic premise is that you're going to have the future relationship to the forefront of whatever happens. But that's not what happened with the European Union, and it is the reason why people can, you know, have, have consistently compared it to, to the Eagles' old song, to Hotel California. You can check out any time, but you can never leave. Um, and, 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 you know, that, that, that's the, that's the, 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 the way they've organised things is part of, of the responsibility, not just the horrendous Tory party um, uh, and its crazy ideas, as my, my colleagues were, were talking about earlier on. And now we're left with a situation with less than 100 days to go, is it 99 days now? We've uh, British government ministers, um, you know, uh, uh, buying fridges, uh, beginning to uh, ramp up uh, the, uh, you know, the, the direct um, leave situation, uh, the exit situation for the end of March. Um, we're also placed, uh, you know, it's profoundly affecting us. Even the timing of our general election now has been has been affected by by what will happen. So we're left in a really profound mess. But it shouldn't be, we should remember the responsibility of the European Union itself for this. I know uh, in some of the conclusions, references, uh, there were references to the multi-annual uh, financial framework and that they were progressing um, and the single resolution fund. Um, and while these measures, of course, do shore up the euro, uh, you know, our own f fiscal freedom may be circumscribed, um, you know, especially in relation to uh, continuing to meet the fiscal uh, rules. Uh, Minister, you, you might remember before um, I, I spoke about the grave reservations across the European Union about President Macron's proposals uh, for a federal European Union, which I think most people in Ireland share, and of course his Thatcherite economic policies have now thankfully received a severe setback uh, due to the uprising of Les Gilets Jaunes over the past uh, six or seven weeks in Paris and the other French cities. But this relentless pressure, I think, from France and Germany to move to a federal-style uh, EU budget, I think it continues to pose significant dangers for our country and for other smaller states. Um, and uh, many times, of course, I, I've noted again the growing net contribution of this country uh, to the budget of the European Union, and post-Brexit, of course, that's going to be even uh, larger still. I note one thing, Minister, that you, you don't seem to have had any discussion whatsoever um, uh, about quantitative, uh, quantitative easing, about the withdrawal by the European Central Bank of quantitative easing, and the fact that they won't be buying assets anymore. And I mean, surely that's going to have a huge impact in uh, 2019, 2020 and onwards, because it did provide a stabilising backdrop, I suppose, although I profoundly disagreed with, it, with that approach, because it it rewarded those who had property and who had assets, uh, rather than actually spending the money on the ordinary citizens uh, of, of the, uh, the European Union. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I note, obviously, that in Pillar 3 there was a discussion about migration, uh, the European Border and Co Coast Guard Asylum Agency, return, uh, the Return Directive, the Common European Asylum System. And perhaps the Minister, again, I'm not sure if the, the Taoiseach got a chance to, you need to spell it clearly, I think, you know, what impacts these proposed uh, institutions will have on our country uh, and on our management, indeed, of, of, uh, of our own uh, borders. Um, I notice, again, of course, a reiteration of the PESCO plans. I was one of the one of the things was 45 of us in this chamber, uh, you know, who uh, objected to the permanent structure cooperation and who have grave fears, particularly when we saw you commenting in uh, one of the conclusions in relation to what happened in the Kerch Straits off the Sea of Azov and, and the standoff between Ukraine and, and Russia. And uh, again, uh, like grave concerns that the European Union uh, and, and ourselves will be dragged into any kind of uh, militaristic conflict in that region, a conflict, uh, you know, differences between those two countries that can only be settled, in fact, by, by peaceful discussions. Uh, but, Minister, I suppose the overarching uh, concern that we do have is that we're left in the most uncertain position, I suppose, over this Christmas that the country has been in since maybe 1945, uh, and with uh, the, the uh, UK uh, government making these uh, dramatic moves uh, for a cliff-edge Brexit, um, it, it certainly does seem to, uh, to put us in, in a very sombre situation. So so again, I, I, I wish you well in the remaining discussions, but um, it, it is a very uh, critical moment, I think, for our country. Uh, thanks, Ken.